Welcome to the YouTube stream, the hybrid program of the AYC uh, Congress in Lahti in 2022. Thank you for tuning in again to our workshop session. Today, or now actually, at four o'clock, we have a new workshop with Torben. Torben, come please in. Mm -hmm. um, Torben, I see the title is When Bad Things Never End, Trauma. Hmm. Uh, but before we go into the topic, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a Norwegian, uh, so I belong in this, this territory. Uh, I now work uh, for the church. I'm, I'm a psychiatrist, that's my mm -hmm. background, and I worked for 12 years in psychiatry in Norway uh, there. But then since 2016, I've been working for the church in health ministries, and I work for the, the global headquarter in Maryland, okay. U.S. Thank you. And uh, I'm looking forward to this topic. It sounds really interesting. And the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you very much. And thank you all for coming. We had uh, like a bit of a stressful uh, preparation here trying to make everything work because I'm going to rely quite heavily on, on short video clips uh, that I'm going to show you. And there was a bit of a panic, like if, if it wouldn't have, at one point the projector didn't work, so we had no uh, image. Then we finally, last minute, we were able to figure out the sound. So we have now hopefully both sound and, and image. Um, and uh, what I want to share with you, I was a bit worried with, with the title that I was like, like no one understands what this is about. So probably no one will come, but I'm happy that you found the way still. Um, what I really want to share with you is very like uh, a crash course in understanding what trauma is. Uh, and this is from like a psychological perspective. Uh, and we're talking very much like about what we, some of you may be familiar with the term complex PT, no, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, but what I think is important to understand is that trauma is on a spectrum. Uh, some people, when they experience bad things, uh, they bounce back quickly, they recover, they go on with their lives. Most people do that. Uh, and basically, most of us, at some point in life, we will have these more or less traumatic experiences uh, that we will, will have. But some people, because of who they are or the character, the severity of the trauma, then it leaves a deeper imprint in, in their lives. Um, and that's where we all are on the spectrum some, somewhere. And that's what I want to help you understand a bit more about this. Um, I have worked my first job as a, like as a resident when I was training to be a psychiatrist was in a trauma department. And since then, I've had, it's been very close to my heart. Uh, it's not like most of my parents, they are patients, not parents, uh, a Freudian slip. Most of my patients, uh, they have been more like depression, anxiety issues, like the big, big ones, uh, personality issues that are the more, more common. Uh, but somehow in most people's history, uh, there's some element of trauma. And just to say that from the outset, trauma, there are, it can be either things that have happened to you, bad things that have happened to you. And that will be like most of the emphasis, but we all need good things to happen to us. And if those good things don't happen to us, that can also be traumatic. And that can also leave wounds, but they are often very much more difficult to deal with and understand because we don't, like, we don't uh, know um, what we haven't had in, in a way. And that's many of my patients have been in that category uh, where like they haven't had enough of the good things either in relationships or, or other, other things that have, have happened. Uh, so just keep that in mind, but we are like, most of the focus will be more on uh, like the traumatic experiences that, that people have had. And I'm happy that you're here because all of us, even if we haven't ourselves experienced something traumatic, if we haven't been traumatized, all of us know someone who has because it's so, so common. Um, so all of us, like, eat, like understanding what's going on, uh, that, that is, is very important, trying to understand. Um, what I will base this much on is a, a resource uh, videos a program that we are developing now uh, at the General Conference. This has been my work for, for some, some time, um, a program we call Reminded. Uh, where we are now this year going to release uh, videos, resources on depression, anxiety, and on trauma. 
Um, so this is not officially released yet. You, this is sort of a pre-screening. Uh, you get to see some of them and they are a bit raw. They're not the finalized version. So the sound and the audio is not quite what it's going to be in the end. Uh, but I think it, it still, still, still works. Uh, so I will use that uh, to, to share, share on this. Uh, so this will be some animation videos that we are going to share where we uh, like convey like the main theories, like what we need to understand. But then there's also a short film that we have created for each topic, for anxiety, depression and for trauma. Uh, also a short film with uh, professional actors. Um, and this is made in Europe by Hope Channel in Germany. Um, so I will also show you some clips on that. So this is something that is, is coming. So if you like, this is Finding Meaningful. Uh, more will be coming later this year that will be online, freely available. Uh, but also I'm, on Friday, I'm doing a talk on depression also where I will use some of the resources we have from, from that. So basically what I want to cover today is what trauma is, the symptoms of trauma and how to manage trauma and understanding these things, whether we have experienced ourselves or others have experienced them. And as I said, in the end, uh, 15 minutes, we will, can have some discussion, some questions. Um, and if there are things that you would like to ask questions about that you don't feel comfortable asking everyone, you can come, come to me afterwards also. And I will start uh, with, well, like what is, is trauma? Trying to get more like a feel for what trauma is. Um, and I will start with a clip from, from the short film. Um, and what I would like you to try to notice, well, like what's, what are the problematic things in this? This is a scene uh, where the lady, the woman uh, who has been traumatized in childhood, um, growing up, uh, she, her boyfriend comes to visit. Um, and then there's a scene that plays out some, some, some it becomes a bit problematic, complicated. Um, and just try to notice, and I'll just ask you afterwards, what do you notice in her behavior uh, that is a bit off? And why I want to like notice this because these are the things that we see and experience when we interact with people, but so often we don't know what's behind. Now, when you watch this um, film, uh, then you understand the whole context, but often when we interact with one another, people can have behaviors that we struggle to understand and to and are like, what's, what's really going on? And we may also take it very personally. Fortunately, her boyfriend doesn't take it personally. He's a good, good, good guy, uh, and he deals quite well with this. But just try to notice, uh, and just also like, what, how would you deal with this this situation? So now, to see, hope everything thing works. decided whether you'll find for the height this weekend. Hey, what's wrong? No, 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 
Oh, miss. Don't do that. So don't sneak up on me like that. I'm sorry. You scared me. I didn't mean to. I just can't deal with this now. I just can't. It's just too much. Did I do something wrong? Please don't. Sarah. Chris, go. Please, just go. Go. That's that's one one scene from from this short film. Do you notice anything? And I think now we, we don't do the microphone. If you just have it, like I will repeat. If you say like, do you notice anything in the way she reacts, responds, behave that you think are sort of indicates that she's struggling with something? What what do you what do you notice? Um, seems like she's overreacting. Yeah, she she's overreacting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clearly, there's an overreaction here. Uh, and what is she reacting to? Is she reacting to what he does, really? No, she's reacting to something else. Something else is going on mm -hmm. in, in her mind. Maybe some childhood trauma? Yeah, that, that is the story. This is a story about someone who has a childhood trauma. But that, it doesn't need to be childhood trauma. This could be any kind of trauma, really, where people, we have this, they, we have overreactions. And what I think is important to understand when we deal with one another, when we relate and interact with one another, whenever we see some kind of overreaction, it's usually there's a story behind what we are seeing. And that's what it's very important for us to be sensitive to, because we, if we just respond to like the overreaction or what we, the behavior we see, we won't be able to, to communicate well or, or relate well. We need to try to be sensitive, even when we don't know the background story, like you just, we jumped into a clip here. Uh, you haven't seen the background story, uh, but you see that there is an overreaction. So that's, that's something you can notice. The next video, this is an animation where we uh, like try to explain a bit more about trauma. Is So in the next videos that will show like this, you probably, Keep in mind this scene that we saw uh, and see, can you identify some of the problems she is struggling with uh, based on, on what we're sharing, sharing here? Probably Sorry? Probably it was a trigger, but for us in Napa Ogils, which was the trigger? No, no. Uh, and that, that's always like the, sort of the point here also. We're ju just jumping into something, but we see there is something go going on. And yes, there are triggers. There's also in the story, there's something happened earlier in the day that triggered like more and more, more things. What is trauma? Since the beginning of history, we have sought to be loved, to be safe, and to be happy. Sadly, we live in a world where we all, sooner or later, experience hurt, harm, and death. Trauma is the result of events that emotionally overwhelm us and our capacity to cope. They are unbearable and intolerable experiences. Trauma leaves a lasting impact on how we feel, think, act, and relate. It's not the event itself that determines how traumatic it becomes, but what it actually does to us. Two people who experience the same event may have very different responses. Neglect abuse or violence, whether it's physical, emotional, or sexual, often results in trauma. Other traumatic events are accidents, natural disasters, war, or something terrible happening to a loved one or someone else. Research indicates that 70% of us experience at least one traumatic event in our lifetime. 
It happens to family members, friends, neighbors, and colleagues. Trauma is not over when the traumatic event is over. It continues to live within us. We may relive it in memories, dreams, and flashbacks. We may live with constant stress. We are on lookout for danger and threats. We feel that something bad could happen anytime and we are easily triggered. The world feels like an unsafe place and life becomes about how to survive. The effects of trauma may endure for weeks, months, years, and even decades. They affect how we see ourselves, how we see others, and how we see the world. Trauma may become the filter through which we see and experience everything. People who have survived trauma often blame themselves for being weak, for not having protected themselves or others, maybe even thinking they were responsible for what happened. Often they have a deep sense of shame. They may think they are worthless, wrong and damaged. It's important to remember that we are not bad even though we may struggle with many things because of trauma. We struggle because something bad happened to us. We want to move beyond trauma, to leave it in the past, but the traumatized mind and body needs time to recover. It takes time to rebuild a sense of safety, confidence in oneself and trust in others, but it is possible. We cannot change what happened in the past, but we can change how the past impacts us and our lives. And that is um, Sorry. Batteries are. okay. Good. Um, and that that plays in in the dynamics. So that often when someone has this kind of background story experience, it it impacts how they go into the world, how they relate, how they interact. Uh, but it has can have very little to do with like the person or the context that they actually are interacting with. Uh, but still, as I said, like the trauma has become a filter. It has become the glasses through which they see and experience uh, all, all of reality. Uh, so this, it's quite, it's pervasive. It affects generally many areas of, of, of life. Uh, what are the symptoms of trauma? We'll go a bit more deeper into that, uh, exploring like how does it manifest? How is it expressed? Uh, and how is it experienced? What are the symptoms of it? Is the, the volume a bit higher? Is it a bit low? It's okay. It's okay? Anyone wants it higher? Okay, I'll, I'll try to, I, I just feel it was a bit, bit low, so I'll try. What are the symptoms of trauma? After a traumatic event, some recover quickly. Others are not able to return to normal. They keep living as if the traumatic event never ended. They have become traumatized. The core symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD are intrusion, avoidance, hyperarousal, and numbness. Let's have a closer look at each of these. Intrusion means that the traumatic event is relived as unwanted memories that suddenly intrude into the present moment, recurring dreams or nightmares, flashbacks where one feels and acts as if the event is happening right now. Avoidance are attempts to avoid distressing memories, thoughts, feelings and reminders of what happened. Hyperarousal is a state of chronic stress where the person often has heightened alertness, is easily startled, has increased irritability and problems with concentration and sleep. 
Numbness is feeling distant and detached from almost everything, including oneself. It may be difficult to connect in important relationships. It may be hard to feel anything except fear, anger, guilt, and shame. Interests and activities that used to be important and enjoyable may not feel significant anymore. Even the memory of the traumatic event may be fragmented and incomplete. A severe form of numbness is dissociation. Dissociation is a disconnect from reality. One feels disconnected from one's mind and body and from time, space and what's going on around. Things may feel unreal and dreamlike. When such symptoms last for more than a month after a traumatic event and cause significant distress or impaired functioning, then it may be PTSD. Repeated traumatic events, prolonged trauma, and especially childhood trauma may lead to complex PTSD, a more severe form of PTSD. In complex PTSD, there's often dissociation, difficulties regulating emotions, negative self-view, relational difficulties, and loss of hope, meaning, and faith. Trauma is hard to experience and hard to live with. But there is hope. With time, treatment, and supportive relationships, it is possible to heal from trauma. In Reminded, we'll share with you how this can happen. Okay, so this was a bit more about the symptoms. If you think back about the, the short film, the clip, uh, now were you able to identify some of the issues, the symptoms? Uh, that she she was struggling with anything that was like obvious to you now like with this background uh, that that she might have been struggling with sorry hyper arousal yes being that she's she's tense uh, she's like on guard when 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 he when the door knocks she's scared uh, like like most of us, like we hear a door knock, if we're surprised, we can be a bit surprised. But like she's she's almost like terrified, uh, just just by us like innocent or harmless sound like that. Anything else? Irritability. Irritability. Yes. Yes. Uh, and like the overreaction uh, that that she has. Yeah. Avoidance. Avoidance. Yes. Uh, she's she's like when he she doesn't want to talk about things. Uh, that that's also one of the things that that uh, she was struggling or was happening in that moment. Yeah. Anything else? Intrusion. Intrusion. Yeah. Well, yeah, and and she's she, in the end she's she's sad because like it's a terrible situation to be in. Like she had this nice dinner set up with her boyfriend and everything is ruined because of of like the, the strong emotions that that come up. So she's struggling there also like with regulating her her emotions like throughout what's what what's going on any other thoughts about what you saw yes um also numbness she's distant and detached from her boyfriend yes yes so she distant from from him and she's not really present mm -hmm. in a way like he tries to connect with her but she's she's just somewhere else uh, almost yeah anything else that you noticed you, you've, I think you, you highlighted ma many of the important things. Yes? I think that her habit was really very Yeah. Yeah. Uh, towards, towards the end? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that can be like the whole, like just her whole system is so activated. Uh, she's stressed. She's highly stressed. And, and it's, it's, it's like this is tiring also to be in that that kind of kind of, of situation so yeah you you observe many many things um now like we're going to go a bit more into like what what causes trauma what things are is it that that actually are uh, the things that we may experience that that can can cause trauma and again this is just some some highlights there's so many things and as i said also in the other video what's traumatic to one person isn't necessarily traumatic to another person uh, and that's very important 
to, to recognize that we all, exp like the meaning of something that happens can be very different for us, uh, depending on who we are, depending on our history and what has happened, happened in, in the past. So some more of the causes of what trauma. What causes trauma? 70% of us will experience at least one traumatic event in our lifetime and many suffer after such experiences. Globally, around 4% will experience events that are so distressing, threatening and overwhelming that they will develop a post-traumatic stress disorder. What are the most common causes of PTSD? From research, we know that sexual violence, such as rape and other kinds of sexual abuse and assault, is the leading cause of PTSD. Sexual violence is all about violence and very little about sex. It's one of the most evil and hurtful things people do to others. Claims of sexual violence are usually true. They should not be dismissed without careful consideration. The second leading cause of PTSD is domestic abuse. These are behaviors that frighten, intimidate, terrorize, manipulate, hurt, humiliate, blame, injure, and wound someone close to us. For each person traumatized in war and conflict, there are many more who are traumatized within the walls of their homes by someone who should have loved and protected them. One of the most common traumas is unexpected loss of a loved one. It can lead to complicated grief and PTSD. Other major causes of PTSD are traumas related to war and conflict, witnessing someone terrible happening to others, experiencing physical violence, accidents, and disasters. In general, the more intense and long-lasting the traumatic event was, the higher the risk of PTSD. Who are most vulnerable to becoming traumatized? In general, men experience more traumatic events, but females are more likely to develop PTSD. Other vulnerability factors are younger age, having experienced earlier traumas, including adverse childhood experiences, previous mental health challenges and substance abuse, lower socioeconomic status, and lack of social support. In this world, the reality of trauma is something we all should care about. Many traumatic events are people willfully hurting people. Let us therefore stand together so we can protect one another and prevent unnecessary suffering. And let us always be kind, compassionate and supportive of those who suffer from trauma. In our next video, we will seek to understand more about what trauma does to our brains and our bodies. So there, there are many things, traumatic events that can happen, like accidents, wars, things that happen that are beyond our control. Uh, but the sad fact for us as a human race is that the most common causes of trauma are things that are within our control, things that we do to other people. Uh, like mentioned, sexual violence is the leading cause of people being traumatized. Domestic violence abuse is, is number two. And that's why I think we as a church and community, we should really, really take this serious and have a zero tolerance for this to happen in our community. And in order for that to happen, we have to talk about it uh, because unfortunately it happens also in our communities. We are just human beings uh, and we have the weaknesses that other people, people also have things happen uh, also in our context and people experience this, things are, people are traumatized. Um, but if we're going to have a zero tolerance, we need to be talking about this and we need to be supportive whenever someone comes out and says something that they have experienced something bad, uh, we need to take that seriously. Uh, usually there's very little to gain in coming out and telling something like that. It's a huge threshold for people to, to tell about uh, these things when, when they have, have happened. So it's difficult. Uh, so wherever we are, whether it's in church or in our families, at work, wherever we are, um, very appeal to that we, we take this seriously. Uh, and again, whenever we see people who are struggling somehow, even though we don't know 
what it is, what's behind it, uh, also to, to maybe give it uh, some thought is maybe, is it because uh, of they have struggled or experienced bad things uh, in the past and because of that they may not be acting and behaving appropriately uh, in every way, but instead of being harsh and critical with them because of uh, what, what they do, sometimes we need to try to look behind and, and, and wonder what, 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 what it is. Um, next one is about what happens to the brain and it's not just the brain it's the whole body experience uh, when someone is traumatized it affects the whole body uh, often they struggle with physical illness also uh, as as a consequence of of this um, and this is like too imp important to emphasize because recovery from trauma uh, it's important to understand it's not something you just you can't just like change the way you're thinking about, about something, there's no quick fix uh, for it because it, it has such a deep impact uh, on both the mind and the body uh, that it takes time to change, uh, change this. And I think this, this video will, will show something about that. What goes on in the traumatized brain? Let's look closer at how trauma affects three important parts of the brain, the thinking brain, the emotional brain, and the instinct brain. While the thinking brain is slow, the emotional brain is quick and the instinct brain works automatically. When faced with danger, the emotional brain responds instantly and activates the instinct brain to get us out of the dangerous situation. Meanwhile, the thinking brain may be effectively shut down. The emotional brain first considers escape or defense. Adrenaline and cortisol are released. Heart rate, blood pressure and breathing increases, energy is released and alertness heightened. The brain and body are ready for fight or flight and has become hyper aroused. If, however, one is helpless and trapped, if fleeing or defending oneself is too dangerous, the brain and body may instead shut down. Acetylcholine is released. Heart rate, blood pressure and breathing decreases, one loses strength Awareness shuts down and one feels numb. One may not even sense physical and emotional pain in the moment. This is the play dead or freeze response. One has become hypo aroused. Dissociation is such a freeze response. In traumatic events, it's not the thinking brain that chooses fight, flight or freeze. The emotional brain takes control and responds before the thinking brain is aware of what's going on. Oftentimes, people who have experienced trauma feel guilty and ashamed for what they did or did not do. It's important to understand that in the moment, it was the brain doing its best to help us survive. Since the thinking brain may be shut down during traumatic events, memories often become fragmented, incomplete and even inconsistent. Instead of a story, traumatic memories are often expressed as intense emotional and physical reactions to triggers. When someone experiences a traumatic event or has a traumatic life, the emotional brain may become hyperreactive and dominate the thinking brain. The emotional brain is constantly on the lookout for dangers and easily triggers fight, flight or freeze. This in turn destabilizes the instinct brain and may lead to difficulties with sleep, appetite, touch, digestion, and arousal. Dreams, nightmares, and flashbacks may activate the same reactions and engrave the trauma ever more deeply into the mind. For the traumatized brain, ordinary things may lose significance and one may become detached from everyday life. When one is stuck in survival mode, there is little room for the ordinary joys and sorrows of life. To manage the ongoing stress of trauma, some turn to addictions and other destructive strategies to cope. In the next videos, we will seek to understand what someone who is traumatized truly needs and how proper self-care and treatment can bring healing. So what, I don't know how much you know about the brain and the different parts of the brain and how, how they work, uh, but Often we, we take pride as human beings in that like our thinking brain and we think we are controlled, we are like, we are rational human beings. Well, that's not true. Uh, we have a thinking brain uh, and it does 
like communicate with the rest of the brain, but it's not the most powerful part of the brain. Um, like in the way we know about how the brain works, uh, the emotional brain is much stronger. Uh, if the thinking part of the brain, if it's able to whisper to the emotional brain, but the emotional brain, it shouts. And when the emotional brain is triggered, like the, the rest of the system uh, listens. Uh, and that's what happens very much in, uh, in trauma, that the emotional brain, it's hyper reactive. It's very like it's, it's easily triggered. Uh, and that's why we have like the overreaction that we, we, we saw. So the emotional brain is triggered. And when it's on full alert, then basically just the way the brain works, uh, the thinking part of the brain shuts down. So it doesn't help to like try to appeal to someone when they are in the midst of like uh, a distressful situation or experience like this to, to try to uh, tell them to like think straight or to be rational about things uh, because the emotional brain is running the show. And that's for all of us when, when that happens. Uh, people who have not been traumatized, they may have a better balance between the thinking part of the brain and the emotional part of the brain. And that's why we're able to like, keep the thinking brain active when we are in stress. Uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. It's helpful to be able to think so we don't, don't just react to what, what, whatever happens. Um, but again, when we see, again, when we see people are in stressful situations, uh, then we can also know that really it's the emotional brain that is running the show very much in, in that situation. And we need to be understanding and compassionate about that. Now I'll do, there's two videos here that I'll do, uh, and then uh, a final one showing uh, the final scene from the short film. And that's uh, the therapy scene. She's been in therapy for many years, and this is one of the like final sessions where she's talking with her therapist about the therapy process. Uh, so I think just for the time, like I'll just run through all of them uh, and then we can have, have some time for questions and discussion. So this is healing for trauma, uh, what, what is important uh, in order to heal. Healing from trauma. Experiencing something traumatic impacts us deeply. Healing from trauma is about reclaiming your mind, body and relationships and managing how you feel, think, act and relate. If you are suffering from trauma, don't struggle with it alone. You deserve and need social and professional support. The goals of trauma recovery are to stay safe, be able to manage the symptoms, process the trauma memories, be fully alive in the present and enjoy fulfilling relationships with other people. Staying safe. To feel safe, any ongoing trauma must stop. Whenever traumatic events are ongoing, it is the natural and healthy response to be on the alert and feel unsafe. If it is not too risky, you should do whatever is possible to stop the traumatic events or remove yourself from them. After a traumatic event, being with loved ones, someone who holds your hand and gives you a hug when you want that, a safe place to stay, food, practical health, time to sleep and rest may help minimize the impact of the trauma. Managing the symptoms. Even if the traumatic event has stopped, for someone who has been traumatized, it is not over. It keeps replaying day and night in the brain and the body. We recommend seeking help and working with a trauma therapist on how to manage your specific symptoms and challenges. Depression, anxiety, eating disorders, addictions, self-harm and suicidality may be ways to manage feelings, but they are not pathways to healing. It is important to replace self-destructive survival strategies with healthy strategies for emotional relief and stress reduction. The goal is to learn how to regulate your nervous system so you can tolerate external and internal stressors and triggers. We seek to expand the window of tolerance, the zone where you function well without being triggered into hyperarousal or hypoarousal. For this to happen, the thinking, feeling and instinct parts of the brain as well as the rest of the body 
must all be online and communicating well. Medications can help make symptoms more manageable and may be beneficial in the recovery process. But medication alone is not sufficient treatment for trauma. In the next video, we will learn more about how to process trauma memory, how to be fully alive in the present, and the importance of nurturing and fulfilling relationships in trauma recovery. Healing from Trauma Part 2 In trauma recovery, it is often necessary to process some of the trauma memories, become fully alive in the present, and cultivate fulfilling relationships. Processing Trauma Memories The goal is to be able to remember and understand relevant aspects of the trauma without becoming so triggered that you feel like you are reliving it. Processing is most effective when you are within the window of tolerance. That is, where you are not overwhelmed by emotions or bodily reactions. If you become overwhelmed by trauma memories, then you're outside the window of tolerance. The emotional brain takes over and the thinking brain shuts down. Fight, flight or freeze responses are triggered. Survival strategies you learned in the past are repeated. If this happens, you are at risk of reliving the trauma and even becoming re-traumatized. For processing, integration and healing to take place, the thinking, feeling and instinct parts of the brain must be active, communicating and listening to one another. The thinking brain must be trained to be sensitive and aware of the feelings and bodily reactions that come up so that it can tell the feelings and the body that we are scared, that this is not dangerous, we are safe now. In processing trauma memories, it is essential to pace oneself with the guidance of a therapist so it won't be too much too soon. There are many ways to work with trauma memories. In addition to talking, writing, art and music may be therapeutic strategies to get in touch with and express aspects of the trauma for which there may not be words yet. Being fully alive in the present. Traumatized people often feel detached from their thoughts, feelings, body, other people and the world around them. The goal of trauma recovery is reconnecting and to become fully alive in the present. For this to become a reality, you need self-awareness and mindfulness. To be fully present in your mind, your body and the environment. Many people find that deep breathing, relaxation techniques, stretching, walking and nature help them become more aware and grounded in the present. When you become more open and sensitive to what is going on inside you and around you, you will feel more alive. Fulfilling relationships. To feel physically and emotionally safe, we need people in our lives who are available, sensitive and responsive. People that come close and provide support when we experience fear and pain. Family and friends, therapists, support groups and religious communities may provide that. For some, bonding with a dog, a horse or some other animal may also be a way to experience closeness to another being. Being connected and supported is the most powerful protection against becoming traumatized and it is essential for recovery. Even if you've been alone and lacked support in the past, it is never too late to connect. Being loved but supported and close to people who are available, sensitive and responsive is healing. Recovery happens in relationships. So, and then finally, I will take time to just show this. It's about five minutes uh, also. But this therapy can be one of those healing relationships uh, that can be, be important. Uh, and I recommend that if you have struggled or if you know someone who has struggled, that they also get uh, treatment, get therapy uh, with, with someone who is qualified to do that. So this is just like this clip, it just, they're t just talking about the process they've been through uh, and highlights what are the important uh, aspects of, of uh, such a treatment relationship. Sarah, how many years have we known each other now? <sighs> Feels 
like a lifetime. When are you going to take me out? Where is this coming from, Sarah? Maybe from the wounded part of me that is still afraid of abandonment and rejection. Yeah, and it's okay that you still have those feelings. You've been with me for years now. You've heard the most awful things about my life. Still, you didn't leave or reject me. You always respond with kindness and compassion. So, what's the probability that I will kick you out? Mm. Zero. Wonderful. I'm proud of you. There was a time I would have to coach you through these tangled, distressing thoughts. But now you navigate them on your own. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Trust is earned. When someone like your father has violated that trust, it can be really hard to trust anyone again. Yeah. I, I didn't really trust you those first months. It took some time to feel that I was safe here. To feel safe with you. Well, that's a normal response for a trauma survivor. Remember, therapy is a relationship. And when you've been abused, you easily become fearful in all relationships. When I started seeing you, I thought we would be mostly talking about the bad things that had happened. <laughs> well, a lot of people have that expectation. But your life is so much more than just the bad things that happened. What was the first thing we worked on? Managing my symptoms. Mm. You helped me with so many things. The nightmares. The dissociation. The flashbacks. Oh, my eating issues and self-harm. It took some time, but now I, I seldom struggle with these symptoms. It was a lot of work, mm -hmm. but you were motivated and committed. Mm. Yeah, you also stumbled a few times. But you got back up. Think of it like this. When babies learn to walk, they fall many times. Have you ever seen anyone get angry at the baby for stumbling and falling? No. Or when someone is paralyzed after an accident? It may take a lot of time and effort to learn to walk again. We don't criticize or blame someone for struggling to walk after such a trauma, do we? You had to learn to walk again, emotionally. I expected you to have some stumbles and falls. That's okay. Falling doesn't mean you're failing. It just means you have to get back up and keep moving in the direction you want to go. You really helped me rewrite my story. You helped me see that what my father did to me was wrong, that he's the bad person, not I. That he hurt me doesn't mean that I deserve to be hurt. I deserve to be treated gently and kindly. You helped me see that wanting to love and to be loved is okay. Taught me to have compassion for myself. Tell me, what has this self compassion done for you? You know, it made such a difference to realize that I'm not bad, mm. that I didn't deserve any of this. Then, slowly, shame began to melt away when I could feel sorry for that little girl. myself, then I could defend and protect her. Now, now I love that little girl I was. 
and the woman has become. A recommendation if you find this interesting uh, there's tons of books of course out there on on this topic uh, one that I found very helpful is this book the body keeps the score uh, by Bessel van der Kolk uh, he really good, like, gives a nice good overview uh, and I've decided like if I ever going to train residents again this will be one of the first books I will recommend to them uh, because trauma is so fundamental uh, in terms of how we function and, and the struggles that, that, that people have. So that is one, one, one recommendation for, for a book. You can probably find it in most online book, book, book stores. Uh, if you look, look for it, this is just from, from, from Amazon. So thank you. If you have any questions or comments that you want to con connect with me, you're welcome to send me an email. Uh, so just if, if you want to connect, you, you can, can, can do that. Um, so that was what I'm going to share. Any thoughts, any reflections, any comments, questions uh, in the last, last minutes? Did you learn something? Yes. With this, I, the question is if you can develop any resource for children and youth for this. That's what I would want to see happen in the future. Also that we base on these things, that we develop things uh, for, for children. And we are, we are actually we are talking about that uh, because we think that's so important also that we also like we, we, we train our children to understand these things. Mm -hmm. uh, also because if, if they understand, they will train their parents. Uh, also, so that's that's something that we would like like to do. Also, yeah. yes. So my question is: um, I'm a pastor, so I have to work also a lot of with people, hmm. and um, some people are spouses of these traumatized persons. Hmm. Um, and what can we do to help also these people to help these traumatized people because they have to suffer also. Mm. Um, because of this traumatized uh, person. Yeah, yeah. And th that is the case, like that is uh, around someone who is struggling, like the, the poor boyfriend in this short film. Uh, he struggles a lot with their relationship. Like it's fortunate, we had to make a happy ending so it, it, things work out well. Uh, but that, that's a challenge. And that, that's where I think for people who are around someone who's struggling, that they become educated so they can understand better things. Like this, hopefully reminded, can be one of those resources that we think that if this is not for ch people, just for people who have been traumatized. It's also for other people who want to understand more about, about trauma. Uh, but then also beyond that, uh, I often recommend when someone is in a supportive role for someone who is struggling a lot, that they make sure they have sufficient support as well. Uh, and that can even mean guy like that they need to go into some kind of therapy to process the things they are experiencing. Uh, like the boyfriend Chris here, when he was kicked out of this department, that ruined his night. Uh, and probably that was, was hard for him. Uh, he loves Sarah, uh, his girlfriend, uh, and he is supporting, but it causes him a lot of pain uh, also to be in, 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 in this situation. And, and making sure that you, you have someone to talk to, uh, either someone who offers professional support or a good friend or someone who can give good advice and support so can can deal with these things because like, all of us, when we are in this kind of situations, we're triggered emotionally uh, and we need to talk about that. Uh, so because when we can talk about it, then we can process, we can switch on our thinking brain. We can have the dialogue between the emotional brain and the thinking brain. Uh, and then we can go back into the situation later when something comes up again and, and uh, maybe deal with it 
in, in a better, better way. So that's, that's a very important, like the support for the ones who are around, that is very important. Yeah. Yes? Do you recommend that a person like Sarah who had the, do, do you recommend that a person like Sarah who had the traumatic experience to um, go through the recovery process by herself and, and of course friends and uh, a therapist? Um, because it's, it's something that she has to work uh, herself on mm. or um, outside the relationship? Mm. Or do you think that such a recovery is also possible uh, within a relationship mm. with, with uh, keep continuing and having the relationship with her boyfriend? Yeah. Um, it's a very good question uh, about do like, can you deal with these kind of issues in an intimate relationship? where these things often are triggered, like the closer you are, the more we trigger each other. Um, and I think there's, there's no one question or answer to that. It depends uh, on the individual, it depends on the relationship. Uh, what we say like trauma is heals, recovery happens in relationships, like any kind of relationships. But very important, when you have had traumatic experiences, you need to be in good relationships like other relationships that are destructive. And that's unfortunately what sometimes happens is that people get into other destructive relationships that look like what they experienced in the past. We have a tendency to repeat our past if we haven't worked through it and, and, and gone, gone like processed it. Uh, but I think definitely if it's a good relationship, uh, that can be one of the best places to heal like where there is safety, where there is someone who is responsive, someone who is caring, kind, and has the capacity to, to stick around when things get difficult. I think then, then a relationship can definitely be a good thing for that. But sometimes people, because they feel like Sarah, she could have said, I, I'm just not able to deal with a relationship. I'm not able to be in a relationship right now and maybe choose to say I need to work through my own things before I do that uh, and sometimes people make that kind of decisions for themselves also that people from the outside they don't know the whole story so they know like why are you not in a relationship you should like be like this is a nice guy or this is a nice girl when they on their own they made, made a decision that uh, I, it's not the season it's not the time for me right now to do it Again, this is where we ought to be respectful and, and sensitive to people because people have reasons for doing the things they do, which often are not obvious to, to us uh, when we are looking on the outside. It can also happen the opposite, that uh, the person says, well, this is, not, uh, this is not something that I can help you with. This is something mm. that you need to work on yourself. Yes. And that can make it even worse for the person. Yes, there, there is a risk that like, if, if, if the partner can't deal with it and, and pulls out, that that will be like hurtful and harmful. But then again, there are always two sides, like there's two people in that. It's also if someone realizes I just can't deal with this, maybe this triggers my issues where they become aware of their own struggles and they need like, I need to go somewhere else uh, to, to deal with this. So it's like, it's, it's complicated. It's complicated. Um, but again, like this, most people on some level have some kind of, of trauma. Uh, the majority of don't on that level that it sort of impacts everything. It doesn't like become the glasses that we see the whole reality with. Uh, but all of us have these wounds, we have scars that we are dealing with, uh, and it's important that we are sensitive to one another on, on, on this. Mm. Yes? Uh, when uh, you say that we should be, if we're able to, to stay with a person that is traumatized, but what if they <coughs> don't want to be helped? What mm. if they don't want to see a psychiatrist or mm. anyone what to do if they don't want to get out of the trauma, even if you know they are traumatized, mm. even if they know they are traumatized, what can we do at that moment mm. to still help them, but without uh, uh, crossing their boundary? Mm. How can we help at that, at that time? Yeah. That's a very good question because that's what we often experience when people are struggling, like with any problem basically, that it may be obvious that they need help, they need support, but they may be resistant. 
uh, like we may have done that ourselves, that people point out things in our, us that we think they think we should work on, uh, but we're not willing to do that, or not not right now, or what whatever. Um, like we can't force people. Like people have a free will, and we must always respect that. Uh, when it comes to mental health, unless people are like in active risk of killing themselves or killing someone else or harming others, then they have freedom. Like we, sometimes we need to interfere. If someone is on the bridge wanting to jump off, then you, you act. You don't say, okay, you have, we, we will respect your freedom. Uh, we, we don't do that. When, when, when the life is at stake, uh, then we, we may have to in intervene. But in general, when, when, people, when people are resistant, like, if you're able to stick around, focus on the relationship instead of focusing on the problem, that can be, I think, one of the better strategies in that kind of situations. Like continuing to be a friend, continuing to be a good family member, and to, to, to stay connected with a person and, and carefully uh, nudge uh, the person now and then, like saying, what about this, like with, with, without forcing them. Um, but just that's my general advice. If, if they don't want to work on the problem, then may try to keep the relationship at least because that gives you potentially the, a platform or a position for in the future um, to, to be able to help because that often this is a process, being understanding the issues, being willing to, to uh, work on things, like all it, it takes, takes time. I think we are... Time is up. Yes. Thank you very much, Torben, for your presentation. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope our audience uh, in the hybrid program on YouTube have enjoyed it. You have given us your contact details. Mm -hmm. Is there maybe something more where we can get information as, you know, if we would be um, at home now and we, we have a person that we think of and we would, mm -hmm. you know, is there a way where we can see those videos, maybe go through it again? Is there a website mm -hmm. or something? It, it's coming. Okay. Uh, like later this year, this should be on the website reminder.org. Okay. We have the website now. You can bookmark it, but it, there's nothing there okay. at, at, at the moment, but, it, but it's coming. But in general, like if you go to YouTube mm -hmm. or just Google things, if you find good organizations, then there are lots of them in every country. There mm -hmm. are organizations, mm -hmm. uh, government organizations or other kinds of organizations that have information. Mm -hmm. Uh, like even Wikipedia mm -hmm. uh, is often very good on mental health mm -hmm. issues. So go there, look for things, read about it. Uh, that's a good way also to educate oneself. Thank you. So we are now at the end at, uh, of our stream. The next time slot where you can join us live is again at 19, 7 p.m. finish time, GMT plus two. Tune in for our pre-program before the main event and uh, see you then.